the thing that pushed my mental health the absolute worst was when I was homeless. I was homeless at the age of 15. And I've attempted suicide four times in my entire life. And I lost my best friend, Willie Tarver, November 9th, 2014, to suicide. The worst part about that was he called me that morning. We were going to a party. It was basically like a car meet, and then we were going to a party later. And for some reason, he didn't want to go. He had been arguing with his girlfriend. We ended up going to the party. Um, that morning, I slept in, and I slept through the call. He called me seven times. I saw my phone, tried calling him back. There was no answer. I texted him. I was like, hey, just wanted to let you know I made it home safe. I'm on my way to work. Didn't think anything of it. I'm having missed calls from everybody in our crew. And I'm like, what's going on? And then um, his mom actually um, posted something on Facebook and she was like basically announcing my son's gone. I just wanted to update everyone. Like, you know, I'll be giving out information. Please stop calling me, da da da. My dad came out, he was like, what happened? You know, and I was like, I think my best friend just killed himself. If you think about when boys are little, right? When they fall down or they get their feelings hurt, a lot of times people have a tendency to say, stop crying, right? Just get up and keep going. So sometimes boys learn at a very early age that, you know, I can't express myself if I'm hurt, if, you know, I'm mad or whatever, I have to kind of suck these feelings up. So this is the messages that um, start as a kid and they're continue to be reinforced, like, you know, be a man and don't be a, whatever, right, then that's just kind of how, how they've been um, trained by society, by family. Um, and so when they get to be adults, it can make it very difficult for them to be able to, uh, one, acknowledge that they need help and then being able to, to reach out for fear that, you know, I'm not being a man. In a blink of an eye, he was gone. And it really, it really made me realize that suicide doesn't it doesn't end the pain. It just passes it along to someone else. Society needs to talk about what are the signs? What can they do? Because there's a bunch of people that don't care. And those people that don't care, they're help pushing those people that are suicidal, that are dealing with depression over the edge. Really be able to listen non-judgmentally um, and kind of be empathetic to what that person is really experiencing. You can outright just ask, hey, are you having some suicidal thoughts? Um, there's myths out there that if you ask someone that that's going to put that idea in their head and that's just absolutely not true. There's like new um, suicide prevention apps that are out there, um, but if nothing else, definitely be able to say, hey, I'm really concerned about your safety, I think maybe it would be a great idea to just go to the hospital and just be evaluated, you know, and I can be there with you for that process. So if there's naturally someone, hey, are you okay? Is there anything going on? And then you're like, well, since you're asking, since you're concerned, since you care, then you can feel that. But if there's someone, everybody else has their own problems. And imagine trying to be like, hey, do you have a second to listen to mine? I remember when I had my very first suicide attempt in high school, they thought it would be good to try and send me to like an alternate learning. No, that's not the way to do it. The biggest thing is like, oh, we don't want our the kids coming to school high and stuff like that. Why are they going to school high? Maybe the student that's getting into a bunch of fights isn't getting into fights because they just like to hit people. Maybe someone's hitting them at home. Maybe they can't release that anger elsewhere. You know how like in middle school and elementary school, we had like nap time, we had like homeroom, we had like those kind of things. I think there needs to be something put in place where you can just talk. I think in general in the school system, um, it could be beneficial to have some kind of mental health awareness classes um, where people just understand the basics of the difference between mental health and mental illness, um, just kind of general symptoms um, to look out for, not only for themselves, but to be able to identify if any friends or family members need help. And then, um, you know, these, like you said, these are the designated people that at our school that you can, that you can go to. So I would even start as early as elementary and go all the way up to you know collegiate level I'm still trying to figure out the full answer to that as in why am I still here but after surviving 
I talk about it more because I feel like in that moment, I felt like I had no one else. And I know whoever else is, goes into that moment, they feel the exact way. So why don't I reach out? Like I reach out a whole lot more to other people now, you know? And I feel it also has to do some with Willie. I've only attempted four times, but all four of those times I reached out to someone, a final like reach out. So I make it known that I can be that final reach out for you. And there have been some people that I have stopped or not, I don't want to say stopped or saved, but that I've made them realize this isn't the answer to their problem.